G'day guys, Socket here. Today we're going to continue on with our uh, REW car audio tuning tutorials. Uh, this is number three in the series and today we're going to look at setting up our USB mic uh, so we can take some measurements. So before we get started I just want to explain that there are two types of microphones commonly used uh, with REW. The first type is a USB mic which is connected to your laptop via a USB cable and the second type is an analog microphone which is generally connected to an audio interface using an XLR cable and often has a loopback um, to provide a loopback reference signal. Um, so today we're going to look at setting up the USB microphone and I will cover the analog microphone setup in a separate video. So if you've already got a USB mic, that's great. Um, if you're looking for a recommendation, I use the U-Mic uh, 1, which is sold by Mini DSP. I'll pop the link down in the description. But the reason I use this mic is it's uh, affordable, it's very robust, uh, it works really well with REW. In fact, they have some form of affiliation with REW because uh, on their website, They've got instructions on, you know, how to set it up and configure it to work with REW. It's pretty much plug and play. Um, they do have a updated version that they released uh, about a year ago or so called UMic 2. It's a bit more expensive. If you want to save yourself some money or you're on a budget, uh, the UMic 1 is perfectly fine. Um, so for uh, the rest of this video, I'm going to be um, uh, doing the setup and demonstration using my UMic 1. Okay, the next couple of things we need to do is uh, get the calibration file for the microphone and just go into the playback uh, device settings to check that um, everything's set up properly in there. Um, so the calibration files. Um, look, it's not absolutely critical if you can't get your hands on your calibration files. You know, it's not the end of the world. Um, if you can get them, you know, that's great. You may as well use them. On the U-Mic, um, if you have a look here, there is a serial number on the barcode and you can go to the U-Mic website and you can punch that serial number into these um, little text boxes. Uh, press submit and it will give you the calibration files for your specific microphone is fabulous. Um, you get two, two of them, a regular and a 90 degree calibration file. Uh, the regular is when you've got the, the microphone pointed directly at a speaker and the 90 degree calibration file is when you've got the um, microphone pointed directly up the ceiling. Um, we will be using the 90 degree calibration file. So the next thing we want to do is go into our uh, playback uh, device settings um, to just make sure everything's set up properly. Um, I'm going to be doing this on uh, Windows um, but if you're running a Mac all the instructions are in the Mini DSP uh, website. So we'll need to go and open up our control panel. So we'll do that by just typing control panel down in the search bar. Um, clicking up here going to hardware and sound, uh, manage audio devices and then once we're in here we'll start with the playback devices which is the speakers so we'll just double click on that and then go to uh, advanced and then we just want to check that this is 24-bit 4800 hertz. I did a bunch of options but this is the one we want so that's that's correct so we can go OK and then we want to go and check the same on our microphone. So uh, just double click here and go to advance and two channel 24 bit. Yep, that looks fine. So um, just double checking that that's all set up correctly as well. So now we can move on to setting up the microphone in REW. Uh, get the microphone set up. So we're going to start by opening REW. And we'll get a pop-up asking whether we want to use the U-Mic as the measurement microphone. So we're going to click yes. Then ask whether we have a calibration file. Uh, as I said before, if you don't have one, it's not the end of the world. 
um, but if we have one in our case we're going to load it up so we'll click yes and then it, we will ask us to select the file so we'll browse to where it's located as I said there's two files uh, we want the 90 degree file uh, that's one that will be pointed up at the ceiling so we click open and we can close that and um, if we now go up into the preferences, we'll see that the UMIC is the selected input, uh, input device. And if we go to the calibration file, we can see that the file is actually loaded up there underneath the uh, UMIC. Okay, with the microphone now connected up, we'll just go back to the sound card and make sure everything is set up correctly. So uh, we want Java as the device driver. Um, you want to select the sample rate for your microphone. Now the UMIC1 is a 24-bit 48K sample rate. So uh, we've got 48K selected. We want the output device, for example, to in this case to be our speakers. Um, but it depends on where you're sending your signal to that might look different. The input device is the UMIC that we just set up. And then these timing references and things um, we can just leave them for uh, as defaults for the moment. So um, that's the sound card uh, all set up. So now we'll go and have a look at the uh, the RTA. All right. So the real time analyzer or RTA is going to be the tool in which we do most of our measurements. And we've looked at this briefly when we did the quick tour in the last episode. So if we click on the RTA and we'll just maximize it so. Uh, we can see it a bit better. Up in the upper right hand corner is the um, settings uh, icon and these are the settings that you want to transfer um, into your real-time analyzer. So you want mode set at 148 octave, you want smoothing as no smoothing, FET length at 64k, averages forever, uh, check this stop at um, little window and uh, set this to 105 averages. <clears throat> Select Han as the window and a maximum overlap of 87.5. So they're the settings that you want to pop in. Um, I'll quickly run through now why they're the right settings for um, the type of work that we're going to do. So first of all let's have a look at mode. Um, so there are basically two modes. You can use Spectrum or you can use RTA. Now Spectrum is basically used for when you're doing white noise and RTA is used for when you're doing pink noise. So I'll show you what happens if we select Spectrum and we start the uh, measurement window. You'll see you know you get some sort of graph and this big furry you know plot you know from 1000 and above right. So that's you know if you're getting a, a, a if you're getting a measure that looks like that, it's probably because you've got the spectrum set in your mode instead of real-time analyzer. So if we click on the RTA setting for mode, you can see we have that much more familiar looking um, measurement that we're used to. So the so notice that we also have a number of RTA options. Um, we're looking to use 148 octave because that's the highest resolution and we want as much information as possible when we're doing our measurements. And it's the same reason why we have no smoothing on because you know we, we don't want um, our data to be um, smoothed in any way. FFT length is at 64. Uh, you can increase it or decrease that, but 64 is a good compromise between processing power and um, level of detail. Averages forever. Um, once again you can change that setting but um, uh, when you're doing the measurements uh, the the uh, tool is actually averaging all the measures um, so we want that to be set at forever. Uh, we also want you, know, you can turn this on or off but basically if you turn this on what that will mean is the measurement will stop when you get to um, 105 averages and you can see the averages down the bottom here or the average count down the bottom here. So when it gets to 105 the measurement will stop and you'll be able to save it uh, without having to hit the space bar all the time. Now why 105? And the answer is because you want to take about 50 averages from the um, right hand side, 50 averages from your left hand side and when you're switching between right and left 
you want to have you know a couple of averages you know to um, just make sure that you've 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 got enough measurements that the whole um, measurement graph has stabilized so uh, that's why I use 105. Um, the window selection is Han. There are a bunch of them that you could use. A lot of people argue that you should use rectangular, but from what I've read, um, rectangular needs both the mic and the processor to be on the same clock cycle or something, um, which is not the case with the USB mic, I understand. So um, that's why the Han window is used in preference over rectangular. And finally, Max Mobile App 87.5 because that correlates to the FFT length of 64K. So they're the settings. Once you've got them set up in your RTA, you don't need to worry about them anymore. We can just close that down and go back to our main menu. Okay, so now that we have our microphone set up and our settings plugged into our real-time analyzer, um, the last thing we need before we can start doing some measures is a source of pink noise. Now, pink noise can be a confusing topic. Um, I will do a separate standalone video just explaining the difference between mono and stereo pink noise and you know when you're supposed to use what type of pink noise. But for our purposes, um, we're going to want a correlated pink noise file and an uncorrelated pink noise file. Um, and you can grab them off a website or you can come to the REW generator tool and if you click on that and you click on noise you can find your pink um, random and pink periodic uh, pink noises so pink random is uh, your uncorrelated pink noise um, that means that you've got different signals coming out of your left and right speaker. Pink periodic is your correlated pink noise where you have the same um, signal coming out of your left and right speaker. So you use um, uncorrelated pink noise when you're doing speaker measurements, when you're measuring your speaker responses, and you use correlated pink noise when you are doing time alignment or when you're trying to work out whether your speakers speaker pairs are summing or cancelling out. Um, so we're going to need a copy of both. Now in REW um, they give you the option to create um, your own files or get uh, or the ability just to play the file um, within REW. So if I click the green play button now you can hear the pink noise playing in the background. Um, but in our case, we're going to want to probably create a file so that we can transfer it onto our phone or a digital player or you know, whatever we're using as a source. So let's, uh, let's look at creating a couple of files. So for example, we're going to do pink uncorrelated. We're going to want that to be full range. So that's from 20 hertz through to 20,000 hertz. Some of these band limited um, pink noises are great for the home audio guys who are, you know, just want to measure their mid-range speakers, um, you know, or something like that. But we will want the, you know, the full spectrum. Um, so that's why we want uh, full range. Um, then we will click to save to file. And here we can set up, um, you know, with what channel we want the pink noise to play through. So it's just a left or a right. Um, the uh, the sampling rate, so in our case for the U mic, it's a 48 hertz. Uh, whether you set the bit rate, so once again, it's a 24 bit microphone, uh, or you can put on 32 bit floating, which will allow it to vary. Um, duration is set for a minute by default. I would probably change that to five minutes to give you plenty of time to do your samples. And, you know, and once you're done, you can just click on the save and save that WAV file and then transfer it to wherever you want to take it. Um, so that is, uh, so now we'll have our, our pink noise files and we're kind of ready to uh, start doing our measures. Um, so I guess that concludes the setting up of your USB mics um, and brings us to the end of this video. Um, so once again, thanks for watching and uh, I look forward to catching you in the next one.